What is up you guys? It is Zach and welcome back to my channel. Now today we're going to be talking about Spongebob Squarepants, the Cosmic Shake, and lots and lots of stuff to do with what we know about the game so far. Before we start though, I would like to make a really cool announcement. This weekend for Chatterday, I will be having Riders DX on the channel. Me and Riders are going to talk about Spongebob Squarepants, Battle for Bikini... Hold on. Spongebob Squarepants, The Cosmic Shake. It's going to be so much fun. Hopefully you guys can join us. It's going to be happening at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, we'll set up a whole stream page so that you can kind of see, you know, when it's going to go down. We're going to talk about The Cosmic Shake, and it's going to be a lot of fun. So if you haven't done so already, do subscribe and hit that notification bell. There will be lots of new Spongebob content coming your way sometime soon. So as you guys know, we just got a new trailer for Spongebob Squarepants The Cosmic Shake and it actually revealed a lot of details, uh, you know, about the game. And I'm going to be talking about that today. And more than that, I'm just going to be talking about most of the things that we know about the game. Now, there's probably some, like, really specific details I'm not going to go over. If you want some more specific details, I'd recommend either watching Ryder's video or uh, Shift's video. They both did pretty good videos going over differences and, you know, big details about the game. And I will be doing that. I will be going over a lot of details. But these are going to be the more broad details. What you can expect from the game. What it seems like the game is going to offer. And having some little predictions here and there. So, without any further ado, you guys, let's get on into it. <laughs> so, there are seven main wish worlds confirmed that we are going to be getting to explore. Those worlds being Western Jellyfish Fields, Halloween Rock Bottom, Prehistoric Kelp Forest, Karate Movie Themed Downtown Bikini Bottom. Note that many people are speculating that this is Karate Island. This is confirmed to not be Karate Island. There's definitely some inspiration, but it's a karate themed movie set for Downtown Bikini Bottom. So this all, everything that you're seeing that people are thinking is Karate Island it is not Karate Island, so that's some clarification we need to get out of the way. And the last confirmed level we have is a Medieval Sulfur Fields, which is confirmed in the PlayStation blog by Martin Kruch, who is the senior producer at THQ Nordic. Now, the Sulfur Fields seems to reference an episode where Sandy and SpongeBob are doing some things before Sandy's hibernation. I don't really remember that episode too well. Hey, SpongeBob! Well... At least I still have my personality. But apparently it's a little easter egg to that. Now that leaves two more levels left to be confirmed, and here are my predictions on what I think they might be. I think what makes sense is obviously a warped version of uh, Goo Lagoon, because I think levels like Flying Dutchman's Graveyard and Spongebob's Dream and Mermelay are maybe a little too niche. Goo Lagoon is definitely a bigger location of every other level from Battle for Bikini Bottom. And then it leaves one extra open spot, which I think could either be filled in with Glove World or Mrs. Puff's Boating School. That's what I personally think makes the most sense. Let's talk about the moveset now. Spongebob has an expanded moveset over what he's had from Battle for Bikini Bottom and even the movie game as Patrick and Sandy are no longer playable characters. They are now just NPCs. Well, Patrick's a balloon, but that's a whole other thing. Um, but yeah, so Spongebob moveset has been greatly expanded. So his new moveset includes the bubble wand, which does return from Battle for Bikini Bottom, a jump gliding mechanic, basically extending Spongebob's jump, and it uses the Krusty Krab pizza box, which is a really nice Easter egg. Spongebob has a cartwheel move. Now, this doesn't seem to be like the cartwheel move that Patrick uses in the Spongebob Squarepants movie game. This looks more like a quick dodge, you know, move just to get out of the way of enemy projectiles. He also has a ground slam, which seems to change depending on if it's a single jump or a double jump, kind of like Patrick's ground slam in Battle for Bikini Bottom Rehydrated. Spongebob also has a homing kick, which really reminds me of Sonic the Hedgehog and how Sonic hones in on enemies. And Spongebob also seems to have a bubble projectile that traps enemies in bubbles and stuns them momentarily. Now, it is unclear if the Cruise Bubble or Bubble Bowl are going to return, but given how heavily this moveset seems to be based on Battle for Bikini Bottom, I think they're likely to return, as well as a move like the Up Bash, which actually has not been seen in any of these trailers. It also seems like the main objective of this game is to save characters from each level, as each specific level seems to have a specific character tied to it. For example, Halloween Rock Bottom has Gary, 
Squidward is in the Kelp Forest level, Sandy is in the Downtown Bikini Bottom level, and Pearl is in the Sulphur Fields level. Now, the three big characters that we haven't seen yet in terms of if they're going to be rescued are Mr. Krabs, Plankton, and Mrs. Puff. And personally, I think those three characters are going to fill out the other three levels, and they're all going to be saved. Now, there was a question I had where in the game's promo art, Larry is a very prominent character, so I'm wondering if Larry's going to be another character that needs to be saved, and obviously we also see the Flying Dutchman as a character, so one theory I'm having is maybe you save multiple characters in these levels, and maybe there are like the Golden Spatulas, where in every level, you save a certain amount of characters, because SpongeBob definitely has a wide roster of significant characters throughout the series, so I think it could make sense that SpongeBob is saving multiple characters throughout each level. But that is just my own personal theory. There are a lot of certain things from Battle for Bikini Bottom and Rehydrated as well that seem to be making a return in this game. We see the return of Tiki's. We see the base wooden Tiki's being the most prominent in the trailers, but we do see a little hint of the flying Tiki's in some of the screenshots that were later released. So there are definitely going to be at least the base wooden Tiki's as well as the flying Tiki's. I'm hoping that the rest of the Tiki cast returns as well, as well as maybe some new ones to spunk things up a little bit. Another thing that returns from Battle for Bikini Bottom is underwear as health. The underwear still seems to be health, and there's not much more to say about that. We're getting the underwear back. So the concept of shiny objects or just collectibles around the world that you can collect seems to return here, kind of. It seems like you collect this blue, goopy-like substance. Uh, Riders DX theorized that these are mermaids' tears, which, you know, is the whole theme of the game. Spongebob Patrick has these mermaid tears and things go wrong, and Riders is theorizing that these are the mermaids' tears. And I have no other theory, so I'm going to agree with that for now, that these could be the mermaids' tears. Now, there's also another color that we've seen, which is the only thing that makes me think maybe this isn't mermaids' tears. We've seen this, like, red-ish glowy you know colored one um and i don't know i mean it could just be multiple colors of mermaid tears just like there's multiple colored shiny objects and each one has a different value um very very possible but again we will have to wait and see a little bit more on that one there's also this coin collectible which i'm wondering if is if that's maybe like an extra you know how like in the spongebob squarepants movie game there were extras that you could unlock maybe those coins aren't necessarily like golden spatulas which i've seen some people theorize and even i theorized that at first but i'm thinking maybe those are to unlock the costumes because this game has costumes which we'll go into in a little bit also, sliding returns from Battle for Bikini Bottom, which was a pretty prevalent part of the game, but there are also some newer segments that are pretty much like sliding, but just have a different coat of paint, being like riding Mystery the Seahorse and rolling on a boulder down a hill in Kelp Forest. Now, there are many Easter eggs scattered throughout this game from SpongeBob history, including Larry the Snail from the episode where Gary chooses Patrick over Spongebob as an owner, Mystery the Seahorse returning, and even the legendary Sea Bears from my personal favorite episode, the camping episode. So it seems like a lot of their inspiration for Spongebob Easter eggs for this game seems to be the older Spongebob content. In Battle for Bikini Bottom Rehydrated, most of their Spongebob references really came from meme culture. Things like Bold and Brash, the, sur the surprise Spongebob animation, all of that stuff seems to very much be inspired from memes. In Cosmic Shake, it really seems to be emphasizing older Spongebob material. There really isn't much newer stuff here in terms of references. Now, this could be because of the fact that most people who are really interested in these Spongebob platformers are the ones who grew up with them in the early 2000s, like myself and lots of other people. Um, but we could definitely see some newer Spongebob references as well for the newer age Spongebob fans, but as someone who hasn't really watched the show in a while, I really do appreciate those touches that even I understand, and it honestly does draw me more to the game. And these easter eggs for referencing the show also go into the soundtrack. Kind of. Now, we know that there are licensed Spongebob soundtrack pieces in here like Sweet Victory as we saw in the reveal trailer. But this trailer also shows that there's going to be an original composed soundtrack for the game. Now, my guess is that maybe also using these coins that I mentioned earlier, you can unlock 
these uh you know these music pieces to listen um whether it be in a you know maybe it's in spongebob's house or whatever like you know being able to listen to it on the side and not actually being a main part of the game which is what i think most people want and the music sounds really good the jellyfish fields theme in this game is actually a remixed version of jellyfish fields from Battle for Bikini Bottom. So I'm really wondering and hoping that the other uh, levels get some inspiration from the other games as well. And if there's a lot of music in this game, as this game is boasting, maybe you can select, maybe you have a choice on which level plays what music in terms of like, maybe you have a choice of five different themes. It'd be really, really cool. And that is a definite wish list thing that might, that's definitely not gonna happen, but hey, a man can dream. As I mentioned earlier, there are a lot of costumes for you to unlock in this game, over 30 to be exact. And the cool thing, at least in my personal opinion, is that they are purely cosmetic, they don't affect SpongeBob's moveset at all, and they aren't tied to any specific level. So you can wear whatever costume at any point. There's no tie, nothing like that. And I think that's what really defeated Revenge of the Flying Dutchman, is that these costumes, you had to keep switching them out. Here, they are purely cosmetic, just for you to wear whatever your favorite Spongebob outfit is, and just play the levels like that. Kind of like, if you remember in the Spongebob Squarepants movie game, you could unlock costumes by collecting the extras. It's kind of the same thing here, except I feel like you might unlock costumes maybe through the level progression, since there do seem to be costumes that link to some of the levels, like obviously the Caveman Spongebob uh, costume, and the Cowboy Spongebob costume, like they do seem to link to certain levels, so you probably do unlock some naturally, but maybe there are some that you unlock through buying them in some sort of shop. Now, the confirmed costumes we have so far, mind you, maybe I've missed a couple, but the ones that I know of are... The normal Spongebob outfit, Spongebob Squarepants in his underwear, which was mentioned by Martin in that PlayStation blog, uh, blog. The Summer Flower Spongebob from that one episode, Caveman Spongebob, the Cuddly Crew Uniform Spongebob, the Karate Spongebob, Cowboy Spongebob, Night Spongebob, Sweet Victory Spongebob, and Snail Bob. Like I said, I might have missed one or two, but those are the ones that I've personally noticed. And the last main point I wanted to draw our attention to is the enemies, and there's quite a few interesting designs here. Some of them look completely original, like one that just kind of splits into two once you hit it, one that has a big bathtub that tries to smash you with, nothing more could be said there, and this big globby one that we don't quite know what it does yet. But there are some other ones that do seem to draw inspiration from the enemies in Battle for Bikini Bottom. There's one that looks suspiciously a lot like the hammer as it uses a hammer-like attack to hit you, and then there's one that suspiciously carries a bottle that looks like tartar sauce and it shoots three of those squirts at you. Huh, where have we seen that before? But yeah, those are the main takeaways I personally had from the Cosmic Shakes trailer. Of course, like I mentioned, there's definitely stuff that I could have missed. There's definitely smaller details that I know you guys are going to pick apart. And you can let me know those down in the comments down below. Like I said, though, I wanted to cover the main game, what the meat and potatoes of this game is and what we can expect. Personally, I am very excited for this game, and like I mentioned, Riders and I are going to be talking about this a bunch on Saturday, so definitely come and tune into the live stream. We would love to have you there. So thank you guys so much for watching today's video. Hopefully you enjoyed. Like, comment, and subscribe. All that stuff down below. Hit that notification bell so that you're notified of when I upload videos, and check out the merch store. There's some cool backpack merch up on there for you to check out. Until next time, you guys, I'll see you all in the next video.